Hey, what's up guys, Andrew here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all-new Dell Inspiron 15 7000 series. All right, let's get started. The new Inspiron 15 7000 for 2015 has gone through a makeover. The new model features a thinner and lighter design made out of forged aluminum. You get an optional 4K display, the latest Broadwell CPUs, an optional AMD Radeon R7. The base model features a full HD panel, Core i5-5200U, an Intel HD 5500, and six gigabytes of RAM. Keep in mind, the base models do not feature the AMD Radeon graphics card. I know there has been some confusion whether the base model has one or not. The model I have here is from Best Buy. This one features a 4K display, 12 gigabytes of RAM, an Intel Core i7-5500U, and an AMD Radeon R7 M270. This model retails for $999 US. So is this the best Inspiron 15 7000 series yet? Let's go ahead and find out. The all-new Dell Inspiron 15 7000 has an all-new design. You get a two-tone finish that looks slick and stylish. The only area where I believe there is forged aluminum is the palm rest section, because the lid and bottom case has more of a plastic feel to it. So compared to last year's Dell Inspiron 7000, that one was full aluminum with chamfered edges. So yes, this year's Inspiron build quality has taken a step back. The weight comes in at 4.6 pounds and its thickest point is 0.78 inches. Compared to the previous Inspiron 7000, that one weighed 5.6 pounds and measured 1.2 inches thick. The good news here is the silver metallic finish lid does a good job of keeping fingerprints away. The keyboard flex on the all new 7000 series has been vastly improved. As you can see here, there is barely any flex. That was one of the biggest issues with the previous version of the Dell Inspiron 7000. On the exterior, it's a whole nother ball game. Take a look at the screen flex on this laptop. This thing almost looks like a bouncing trampoline. The screen flex is terrible on the all-new Inspiron 7000. Screen flex was just as bad. As you can see here, it does bend quite a bit. For your ports on the left side, you got your AC charging port, full-size HDMI port, USB 3.0 port, and your headset microphone jack combo. On the right side, you got your security lock slot, USB 2.0 port, USB 3.0 port, and an SD card reader. Gone is the RJ45 Ethernet connection port found on last year's model. The keyboard performance was adequate, the tactile feedback was good, but the keys were sort of small for a 15 inch laptop. I was disappointed that Dell removed the 10 key numeric keypad, and they also downgraded the overall size of the keyboard. Now the Inspiron 15 7000 series has the same size keyboard as the ultra compact Dell XPS 13. Moving along to trackpad performance, two finger scrolling and multi touch gestures has been good. My biggest knock on this trackpad are the clicks. For example, when I'm trying to click on an application, it will automatically think I'm trying to right click on it. And another issue is the trackpad surface. It just feels kind of cheap. Maybe I've just been spoiled with the all-new Dell XPS 13 trackpad. Moving along to display performance. The 4K Samsung display has been breathtaking. Colors, contrast ratios, and brightness levels were great. Text and images look very sharp and vivid on this panel. Overall, this is a very good display. The only downside to this is the third-party support. Many applications are not ready for the 4K resolution, and therefore, your menus and icons are very small. But rest assured, once Windows 10 launches and the third-party developers get together with Microsoft, hopefully they'll make the 4K experience much better. And our last test on the display is our Spider 4 Pro colorimeter. For the Adobe sRGB, I got a score of 96%. And for the more challenging Adobe RGB, I got a score of 78%. Again, with these kind of scores, you can expect excellent color saturation on your panel. The touchscreen performance on the Samsung panel has been flawless. Two-finger scrolling, multi-touch gestures has been smooth and precise. Viewing angles on this IPS panel has been excellent. Whether you're working on a project with coworkers or enjoying a movie with friends, you're definitely going to appreciate the wide viewing angles on this panel. Next up, I'm going to tilt the display all the way back to give you a sense of how far the display rotates back. And that's at 100% right there. My only gripe on this panel was how reflective it is. So for those of you that plan on working on projects by the window or have bright lighting in your office, keep that in mind. The performance from the dual core i7-5500U Broadwell chip has been good. You get a base clock speed of 2.4 GHz with a turbo boost up to 3 GHz. From basic productivity to photo editing, this processor offers just enough horsepower. However, try to edit a 4K video and you'll quickly realize the limits of the dual core processor. Maybe Dell will offer a quad core processor when the Broadwell H series launches this summer, or maybe Dell will just reserve that CPU for the much anticipated Dell XPS 15. Here are the Geekbench 3 results for the Core i7-5500U. For the single core score, I got 2,871. And for the multi-core performance, I got 5,965. Next up, we have our Cinebench R15. We got a CPU score of 275 CB. Followed by PC Mark 8 Home Conventional, I got a score of 2,224. If you opt for one of the higher end Inspiron 7000 series, you'll get the dedicated AMD Radeon R7 M270 with 4GB of video memory. 
The AMD Radeon R7 M270 is a downgrade compared to last year's NVIDIA 750M. The performance is adequate for medium duty gaming, however you'll quickly find its limits once you start pushing some more demanding titles. I just wish Dell stuck with an NVIDIA card and gave us an 850M instead. Here are some benchmarks for the AMD Radeon R7 M270. For the Firestrike Extreme I got a score of 572, followed by Firestrike with a score just over 1200, followed by Skydiver with a score of 4422, and for Cloudgate I got a score of 5989. For our final GPU benchmark is going to be Cinebench R15. For the OpenGL test, I got a score of 36.44 frames per second. Compared to last year's NVIDIA 750M, that one usually generates around 60 to 65 frames per second. So yes, the all-new AMD Radeon R7 M270 has roughly 50% less GPU performance compared to the NVIDIA 750M that it replaces. Which is really a bummer. I was very disappointed. Alright guys, enough of these boring benchmarks, let's go and test out Battlefield 4 in action with a resolution of 1920x1080. Remember to lower your resolution for the best performance. So far, the game is running at a playable frame rate. I'm averaging around 29 to 31 frames per second on low settings. I'm gonna creep up on him. Get down. I don't want none of this. Let's see what's over here. Oh, who's shooting at me? Woo! Oh, get down. Oh, man. Next up is battery performance. On average, I'm able to get around 3 to 4 hours out of full charge with screen brightness at around 50%. Keep in mind, this was with casual usage like web browsing and mixed video streaming. Yes, even with the upgraded battery pack in the 4K model, battery life is still disappointing. Now, for those of you that don't really do any intense gaming, you may want to stick with the base model, which features the Intel HD 5500 and the 1080p display. You'll get much better battery performance. To get the best battery runtime, you may want to keep an eye on the AMD Radeon Control Center to see which applications are using the dedicated GPU. With the Inspiron 7000 series, you get two bottom facing speakers. The sound levels were pretty loud, but the sound quality was about average. Nothing to brag about. Here's a quick demo of them in action. I'm going to start at around 50% and go up from there. I know many of you guys like to see the internal components of the laptops I review, so here is a shot of the new Inspiron 15 7000. First up, you got your 1TB hard drive running at 5400 RPM. Thank you Dell for making this upgradable, because this hard drive is slow. Upgrade to an SSD for the best performance. The size you want is 7mm. Followed by fan noise. The fan noise during regular usage was not too loud and disturbing, but fire up a game and you'll definitely hear it spinning. Next up you got your two DIMM slots for your RAM. My model featured 12GB of RAM, however for the best performance I would recommend upgrading to 16GB of RAM. And last but not least is our Intel dual band wireless HC7265. The performance and range from this wireless card has been great. I have not experienced any issues with this wireless card. It's kind of difficult for me to recommend the high-end Inspiron 7000 series, even with that gorgeous 4K Samsung display. The battery performance was less than average, the GPU is a big downgrade, and the overall build quality seems to have taken a big step backwards. Maybe Dell is trying to keep the XPS 15 farther apart from the high-end Inspiron line. With that being said, I would choose the baseline Inspiron 15 7000 without the 4K display and without the AMD Radeon GPU. You'll get much better battery performance out of that unit. This completes my full review on the all-new Dell Inspiron 15 7000 series. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.